Two guys, one bench. Shit time. Shit time. Drink sports. Combat sports. Over. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Two Guys, One Bench, where we're 650 pounds of shit talking on a 30 pound bench. Where we talk more shit than Alex motherfucking Jones on a post election cocaine booze filled bender number two. Of the information war, it's Alex Jones. This is the most important thing Trump ever said. Always remember, they are coming after me because I am fighting for you. <laughs> yeah, this is really going to be a good one, eh? Uh, <laughs> Welcome to InfoWars, everybody. I'm your host, Alex Jones, and we're in for a doozy tonight. Tritons, Wobbles, are taking over the world. Reptilian Zionists are taking over the world, and you and I are in the worst despair of our entire lives. It's a crisis beyond mankind! I just got over. Two week cocaine infused booze bender. I haven't slept in about two months. Don't let that phase you in believing what I'm saying. Now, as you know, this virus is a complete bullshit communist Chiacom operation uh, created in a lab in Wuhan. Bill Gates wants to plant a microchip in your asshole and track you every goddamn place you go. Best selling products are now back in stock for being sold out for months. BioTree selenium for the mustard seed, essential in all electrochemical activity of the cell. Some people think I'm joking when I say I have the best supplements out there. Well, I do. I've sourced this one all the way from Japan. I've heard that Asian people are less susceptible to the COVID-19 virus. It's been proven in documents. I have the documents. So I bring you this product. Some of you might not know this, but the best way to mainline vitamins and supplements in your body is not orally. The best way is intravenous, but let's face it, I'm not gonna make you do that. This right here is the world's largest suppository. Now look at this. Now this little block is gonna fit directly into your rectum and it's gonna explode the coronavirus with an injection of selenium, vitamin D, zinc, pink, I don't fucking know, some other kind of supplements that rhyme with dink. I've currently got four of these up my hoop right now. And I can tell you what, I am feeling like the world is at my fucking fingertips and this virus ain't even gonna touch me. Now tune in to InfoWars and buy my supplements. <laughs> of the information war it's alex jones war smelling salts but sanity Garel, Garel, what are you what are you doing down there buddy what's that thick black thing it kind of smells funny Ugh. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's our award smelling salts. How about we take a quick bump up that smelly shaft? <coughs> oh, Woo. All right, let's get this party kicked off right. Ward smelling salts, our sponsor. Uh, get out there and check out their products. I'll pop the website here. Uh, awesome lifetime use on a bottle. So you can just refill your salts and keep on using them over and over and eliminate trash. What does that do for the ocean drill? Make sure we don't kill dolphins and turtles. Exactly. You don't want that thing plugging a dolphin hole. War, War smelling salts. salts. But but sanity. Sanity. Shit talking. All right. So let's get it started. My rant of the week is on lack of accountability. 
Now, whether it's in sport or out of sport, I just feel people in general need to take more onus on themselves and not expect others to do for them. If your life currently sucks due to unforeseen circumstances, good, work through that. If things are good, you don't complain. So when things are bad, some of the best decisions you're ever going to make are when th you're at your lowest because you're going to have to pivot and find a way out of this hole you're in. So if training's going shitty, good, figure it out. If that means switching your coach, switching your program, whatever you need to do. If you're injured, good, figure out how to fucking get out of this hole instead of blaming other people and expecting everyone to fucking hand feed you for the rest of your life. Definitely. That's taking a little page out of Jocko Wilnick. It's called extreme ownership. There's only uh, one person on, on this globe that is in control of your life, and that's you, motherfucker. So you can't play a little blame game. It was this guy that did this, and I did this because of this person. Own all your shit, even the bad shit, because that's what's going to make you stronger. So take that into consideration. All right, Darrell. Well, my rant is something that's really, you know, gets on my nerves. It's just people that are fake-ass motherfuckers, lying and cheating about stuff. And that's just, you know, people that are kind of putting on a front, you know, oh, I do this, I do that. Oh, and they give advice on, on topics or whatever, but they haven't done shit themselves. So uh, I really find, uh, you know, telling the truth, being truthful uh, to yourself is very important. And in a sport like powerlifting or MMA, there is no faking. Uh, if you think you're uh, an expert in something and you step into a, a place where someone's real and real people train, you're going to get run out and probably your ass kicked. For example, I had a guy call me up about my classes the other day, and he was telling me that he was a 20 degree black belt. <laughs> I asked him how old he was. He told me he's 24 and he wants to train with some real guys. And I, well, I just deleted his number because I'm not ready to handle someone with that kind of bullshit. To tell you the truth, they're just going to run your name into the ground or give you a bad name because they don't really know what it's like to follow the, the true path. So quit fucking lying to yourself and start living the life of telling the truth, doing the hard things and being a good, honest person. Very easy rules to follow. And the more you stray from those, life gets harder and karma fucks you in the damn ass. And the more you lie, the more they're gonna pile on top of each other. So you're just digging a deeper grave for yourself. Exactly. So quit faking that shit. Strength Sports. Choices and consequences. <laughs> okay, everybody, moving along to Strength Sports. Uh, Darrell and I would really like to thank our official sponsors, Misfits. Misfit Clothing, Powerlifting. They're an awesome company and they support a lot of local lifters and Canadian lifters in Canada. Uh, just this weekend, what was going on, Darrell? Uh, they just hosted Shell Shock up in Edmonton, and they had strongman and powerlifting going on, so a lot of crazy performances going out there. Definitely. Uh, we're going to get those recapped to you probably next time. I do have a bit of an awesome video you can watch right now. Boom! <laughs> So as you can see, uh, amazing performances, giant weights lifted. And a lot of these guys we know, we, we see on the regular. Uh, so we just want to give everybody that competed a shout out. And especially Misfit, who put on the event in the meet. They did a tremendous job up at uh, Evolve North in Edmonton. Looks like a kick-ass gym and just... It's the detail they went into everything, Darrell. Like, did you see the trophies? Yeah, like I saw 
the trophies didn't look like your everyday trophies you're going to find at a meet. They yeah. actually had some effort put into them. Yeah, all the it wasn't awards. wasn't a $2 trophy, no. Yeah, no. These were custom Misfit trophies. They had awards for total, which we do a sport for strength. You should acknowledge the strongest person there. Well, for sure, yeah. So, yeah, we love everything they're doing. Um, and potentially Darrell and I are going to do one of their meets in the near future just because it looks like so much fun and just – we know half the people there already, so we might as well go have a great day with them, right? Yeah. Holy shit, Darrell. Did you see that giant man on the weekend lift some crazy weights? Yeah, and honestly, the most impressive thing about that is not only the total he hit, but the fact that he could do it after passing out. If you have no idea who we're talking about, it is Thomas T.D. Davis. One of three men now to hit a 700 pound, 700 plus, sorry, bench in a full power meet. And he was fucking unreal. 805 squat. It was a 705 bench and a 859 deadlift and top 10 total of all time. So I want to give a shout out to him. Not only that, on his third squat attempt, he basically passed out and fell on his face. Yeah. But still came back and bench seven hundo and Jesus it's crazy performance and to me that's more impressive than anything is a guy that does a full power meet you know his buddy irregular strength just a bench only guy you know bench only guys you know it's awesome they can do that one lift but at the end of the day it's your total that matters in my opinion yeah I, I think it's way more impressive myself just to see someone do a full meet and have elite numbers in everything opposed to being the best at just one thing for sure awesome performance combat sports So, Darrell, did you watch the GFC on the, the last two weekends? Uh, bits and pieces of it. You know what I'm talking about, do you? I do, but for the people at home, why don't you film in? It's the Geriatric Fighting Championships. Because the last two weeks in the UFC, it's been a bunch of fucking 40-plus-year-old dudes uh, out there clanging and banging. Turned out pretty good on the weekend for Glover Tejera and Andre Arvlovsky. But, uh, you know, the week before, what happened to our, your most favorite fighter that ever graced the octagon? I had to watch him go out on his shield and struggle for dear life. And it's not the way I wanted to see him go out when you have a legend like Silva get his ass beat. If I want to see an old man struggle for dear life, I would go to an yeah. old folks home. But <laughs> yeah, for sure. It was it was it was sad. You know, it's your retirement fight. And then you get touched on the nose and knocked the fuck out. So as we were saying, you know, heavyweights, uh, although they, they fight probably just as often, uh, the fights are often shorter. And believe it or not, I believe when you get knocked the fuck out, like let's say Arblovsky and Overeem, who've been training and fighting for years and do have that easy off switch, now they've changed their game plans. Yeah. Um, so what I'm finding is, you know, he, he ran a lot. And that's what Overeem's doing. And they're not the knockout artists that they used to be. But they can still kind of hold on a bit. But you never know. Like, at the end of the day, when is your time done? Like, we saw that with, you know, Cormier. All these fighters that are holding on too long. And, you know, in my opinion, when you retire on the top, let's say, like, Khabib or GSP, that's the way to end a career. Not yeah. trying to get money. No, not just fighting to fight and just eating shots like a porn star every week. So... Technique of the week. What's up, everybody? Technique of the week. I'm gonna show you some crazy ass Kyokushin karate shit. This kick is called the Mayashi Mawashi Geri. Gedan Mawashi Geri. So that is uh, a low kick from the front leg. Front leg, low kick. So we're going for the inside of the leg. Great kick to set up some damage, and then to kill the leg, 
uh, at the end with a normal low kick with your right. So uh, I use this all the time to set up kicks and it really fucks guys up. So try this at home, but uh, just be careful when you're kicking your partners. This can uh, cause some damage. Oh, All right guys, so as you can see, really effective kick. Take out that leg from the inside and then hammer down with that low kick and destroy it. Oos. All right guys, and for my technique of the week is how to identify a good coach. I realize it may not be the same as Russ's technique, but this is gonna be just as important for all you strongman power lifters or just athletes trying to take your game to a whole nother level. So what makes a good coach? I think first off, you need adaptability. There's no one size fits all for training anything. You have to be able to um, change your plan accordingly, depending on who's in front of you. You also need the ability to replicate success. It's cool if you got one stud person underneath you, but can you do it with multiple people? It doesn't matter if I have the best person in the world if the rest of my squad is shit. Uh, availability. If you're not available or the person's not available for you, then obviously as a beginner, especially you're going to have to find someone else because you need someone you can get a hold of. There's too many people out there that are just going to talk to you once a week or you can't see them in person. Um, that's going to be a problem. Another thing I look at is experience. Whatever you're doing, I want someone who's been there, done that. Maybe not to the same level even, but just to show that they practice what they preach. If myself, um, with my total, I want someone who's um, also competed at a high level or pulled somewhat close to what I've done or something that I can look at it and say, okay, you know, the same struggles. And lastly, two-way communication. Um, when you're speaking with your coach, you should feel like you can be open at all times. If you're not, then you should probably be moving on because your coach can't help you if you don't fucking say anything. You got to be able to open your mouth and man up and say, hey, I don't like this, blah, 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 because they can't help you to the best of their ability if you're just sitting there keeping shit inside and letting it fester. Awesome. Great fucking advice. Nihongo no benkyo. Let's study Japanese. All right, Darrell, moving on from last week, we learned a little bit of vulgar Japanese. Uh, I think I'm going to teach you a little bit more. Okay, so uh, this is a, a common saying used in Japan. Uh, very quick. Iketsu. 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 Good. Repeat after me. Iketsu. Iketsu. Moteru. 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 Good. Moteru. 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 Moteru, motherfucker. <laughs> Desne. 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 Let's put it all together now. Iketsu moteru desne. Iketsu moteru desne. Close, but no cigar. Fuck. Iketsu moteru desne. Iketsu moteru desne. Not bad. All right, repeat after me, everybody at home. Iketsu moteru desne. <laughs> All right, Darrell, here's what it means in English. You have a nice fat ass. Nihongo no benkyo. Let's study Japanese. 
All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Two Guys, One Bench. Join us next week on Two Guys, One Bench, where we have more rants of the week, and maybe I learn a little more Japanese. <laughs> you damn right. And don't forget to eat big, train hard, and always be fighting ready. Two Guys, One Bench. Shit talking. Shit talking. sports. Combat sports. Choices and consequences. It's it's it. It. <laughs> War, War smelling salts. salts. But sanity. Mutecki Strong Mindset with host Russell Peel. Home Gems YYC.